So in this video, I'm going to tell you how easily you can configure your AWS S3 bucket in order for it to accept files from your Next.js application. So I will show you the entire process. First of all, we will configure the AWS S3 bucket. Then we will create an IAM role so that that S3 bucket can be uploaded to using that particular user. And then we will configure a Next.js application using which you are going to upload the files over to the S3 bucket. This video will only show you how to do private uploads on to the S3 bucket. In case you want to see how to do public Public uploads on S3 bucket where any file that you upload to the S3 bucket is public by default. Do let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. If I get 50 thumbs up on this video, I will surely record a video about how to do public uploads on the S3 buckets. Now over to the video. So let's get started with first of all configuring the S3 bucket. This is my AWS console and we have come to the S3 dashboard. Over here, create a bucket. You can name it whatever. I'm going to call it next S3 and 2 and keep it like this acl should be disabled block all public access and just scroll down here and create this bucket so our bucket is ready now we are going to create an iam user so create an iam user go to iam and inside this go to users now create one more user called next s3 and then two and do not provide this user access to the management console press next and attach policies directly click this link so over here you can create a new policy so first of all we are going to create a policy and then we will assign this policy over to this user so we will select s3 s3 so what we are going to do we are going to select s3 and then we are going to figure out certain properties that we want to assign to this policy and then we will create this policy. So first of all, we need to assign this policy the right to get objects. So we will use this and then put object. We will use this. Then list objects. List buckets, not objects. Then delete objects. And that is it. And what you want to do, you want to add the proper ARN2 and that will be like next S3 2. So that is the name of the bucket that we have created at ARN. And over here as well, type in next S3 and 2 and object name will be any object and press next. You can call it next S3 2. These are the permission that we have created and create policy. Now that you can see that our policies will be listed under custom manage. So our policy is over here. So again, go back to that IEM user, refresh the policies and scroll down or maybe first of all, select customer manage and select the policy that we have just created press next and create user so now this user will have access to the bucket that we have created for our tutorial so this is that user go to this user go to security credentials and scroll down here to the access key part now you need to create an access key inside this particular screen you can select any option that you want to i will select this one and I will press next. I will create a descriptive name or I can simply create it. Okay, so this is the access key that we have created for us. Now, what is the use of this access key? So using this access key, AWS services will recognize who you are. So that is why we need it. So keep this screen on. Next, we are going to create our Next.js application. So let's go to our terminal and type in npx create react or not react but next app and then the name of your application so let's select n next s3 demo and let's start the wizard click y and type a script we do want we want eslint we want tailwind we want src no app router yes and this one is no again and this one will configure a uh, fresh next.js application for us 
So our application is configured. Let's start it in VS Code. So CD to it and type in code dot and we will start the terminal and let's start this application so npm run dev that is the right command once the app has been started you can simply click on this url to load it up in the browser so here is our application we will go to the app folder and inside global.csn and we will clear everything after line number four save it okay so all the styling is gone now again come back to the pages file select everything inside the main tag and delete it it is because we do not want this boilerplate code we are configuring a new application so we do not want anything and inside this thing first of all create a form so we will create a new file type field and we will create one more input of type submit and the value should be upload and now if we see in the browser our upload form is ready so this is what we are going to work with we are not going to do any sort of styling because that is not included in the scope of this tutorial so we will simply test how to upload files from this so what you have to do in order to start uploading files from here you have to create a server action you can see my other video about what server actions are so we are going to create a server action real quick inside the f folder create actions dot ts and in this action dot ts create a new method or export a new method export async function on submit and this will will accept form data that is going to come from the form and form data i'm using github copilot that is why it is showing you all the auto completions we're not going to use those auto completions so let me just switch it off real quick okay so we will complete this body later on for the timing what we can do we can try to see if we are getting data over here so i will do something like this and then in order to use this server action first of all we have to convert it into a server action for that you have to write use server in this file so this will convert this uh, entire file into a server action file which means that all the functions that are in here will only be executed on the server side but they will never be executed on the client side now let's use this server action on our form so come back here and type in action and then the action will be routed to this on submit which is going to come from that server action so imported as you can see it has been imported over here and used over here so and remove this next image and let's see if our form is working so i will select a file i uh, let me select this file and let's upload it and the form data should be logged over here so as you can see the file was not relayed over to the server action let's also put in the name over here called file and let's upload it again now as you can see after putting this name property the form data has been received correctly and there is a property called file and the file details are in here so the server action is getting the form data now is the time to use that form data in order to figure out the file and then put that file on aws s3 so in order to upload the files on aws s3 you will require two packages so let's quickly install that open up a new terminal window the first package that you will require is at aws hyphen sdk client s3 okay. i have made a typo sdk so the next package that we require is npm install at the rate aws sdk s3 pre-sign post so let me give you a quick rundown on what these two packages are going to do so the first package is going to provide us with the access to the s3 bucket so that we can upload file on it and then this particular package is going to create pre-signed post urls for us where the data can be posted to why do we need this thing because let's suppose if we want to provide the functionality where 
any client can upload data from their own machine directly to S3. So in that case, you cannot just pass on your credentials, your AWS credential over to the client. In that case, you are going to create a URL on your backend and then you are going to pass on that URL over to the client. So the client can use that URL and ship their data directly onto the S3 bucket. That way you alleviate the problem of sending down your AWS credential over to the client because the URL that this particular SDK is going to generate for you is going to be a one-time URL that can be safely passed on to the client and the client can only do whatever that URL was created for. They cannot do anything else with that. So that is why we need these two packages. So let's quickly configure uh, the access to our S3 bucket using the first package. First of all, let's try the try catch block because anything can fail at any time. Then establish the catch block. For the timing, it can be any and type in console.error and just dump the error and over here let's first of all configure the s3 bucket so that it can be used so you will write constant client and then new s3 client and then you are going to configure the bucket name first of all we need to import this s3 client so it is going to come from this package and in here you are going to write the region now how are you going to figure out the region if you go to your dashboard and if you go to the s3 bucket again s3 you will get to see the region so the region is written down here or also here okay so you can take this region copy it from here and now in case you want to use it in the code you can do one thing you are going to create an environment variable let's call it aws underscore region and we will create a new file called dot env dot local and in here we will create that particular environment variable and then we will paste the actual value so now the bucket is configured for us on top of that this client will also need access to two more variables which will be responsible for providing or authorizing your request to the s3 bucket remember we created this user over here so these two values will be needed by this s3 client sdk in order to initialize your access to that particular bucket so let's quickly copy this thing go back to dot env dot local and create a variable called aws access key id this is going to be the name do not try to change the name because this is the convention this particular sdk is following in case you want to change the name there are facilities to do that but in this tutorial we are not going to cover that so this is the key we are going with create one more key called aws secret access key again you cannot change the name and the value is going to come from here so the value is right here so this is how you can start a aws client from your code now let's create that pre-signed url that we have talked about so constant url fields and in here you are going to do await create pre-signed post and this method will be imported from this second SDK. Now this will take a bucket name. So again, this is going to come from the environment variable. We will call it AWS bucket name. And again, we are going to configure this inside here. And the bucket name is going to be this thing. save this thing and apart from the bucket name it also requires a key so for key we are going to install one more package called npm install nano id okay so using nano id we can generate unique keys for our uploads nano id so this will ensure that all the files that we are uploading are going to have unique names this way and once we 
get the URL, let's first of all print it out. So console log URL and fields. As of now, we are not going to upload it. We are just simply testing that all the logic till now is working correctly. Let's upload this file and see over here if things got accepted. So it says cannot teach structure property of bucket of undefined. Okay, so it takes a client which we have not provided. And now there is this is quickly line. So there has to be a definite value. So we will do this so as to ensure that there is always a string albeit not valid but always a string so as to satisfy that TypeScript error. Let's upload it again and as we can see that the bucket URL was generated correctly. This is the bucket we are trying to upload our file to and these are the parameters we need to send this over to the S3 bucket while uploading the data. So we will keep it. So now is the time to create a form data which we are going to send over to the S3 bucket which will contain the actual file that we need to upload. So form data S3 new form data. So inside this form data we are going to append all the keys that we have obtained from this field object. object dot entries then fields and then we need to iterate over it form data s3 dot append key and value and after this we are going to append our file to it form data s3 dot append then the key is going to be file and the value is going to be obtained from the form data so form data dot get and the name is file because on the page we have called it file as a string so as to satisfy the TypeScript compiler and now over here we are going to send the data to the S3 bucket. We already have the URL so we are going to issue a simple fetch request response await fetch the URL that we have obtained over here and the data method is going to be post and the body is going to be our form data and we will get the response from the AWS S3 bucket in case anything goes wrong in the XML format and in order to pass that XML format we will use the text facility of the response so we will get text response like this await response dot text. So this way if there is any error we will be able to dump it onto the console at least or we can handle it properly. So we will quickly check if the request goes through correctly. So response dot ok then in that case we can be rest assured that the file upload was successful so we will log it file uploaded otherwise we will say this thing. And we can also dump the text response so as to debug for now. And let's quickly upload this thing. So as you can see we have gotten our message that file has been uploaded. Let's head over to the S3 bucket and see if we have got something. So the file has been uploaded correctly. As we can see here is our file. I think this is the URL and if we click on this URL we will get access denied because by default all the objects that we are going to upload to this bucket are going to be private. In case you want to do the public uploading then you have to do other configuration. Let's go for 50 likes on this video. If I get 50 likes on this video I will record a video about how to do public uploads on AWS S3 buckets and I see you guys over in the next video. Thanks for your time.